All right, so the title for this lecture is Application to Sampled Signals. We'll look at different things that applies only to sampled signals. The agenda is the following. We'll look at the channel capacity. We'll look at the time division multiplexing. We'll look at pulse modulation. And in pulse modulation, there are different techniques. We'll look at pulse amplitude, pulse width, pulse position, and pulse coded modulation. So let's start. As a quick introduction, we would like to highlight the importance of dealing with sampled signals. As um, sample th sampling theorem is important to signal analysis, signal processing, and signal transmission. For every analog signal, for every analog operation like filtering and so amplification, there is an equivalent digital filtering technique. So we have digital signal processing, and we have the traditional signal processing. Now, uh, we are now dealing with not digital, but rather than with, with discrete time signals, the sampled signals. So there are three things that were not applicable to continuous signals, and now they are applicable to sampled signals, which are channel capacity, time division multiplexing, and pulse modulation. So let's look at uh, one at a time. <clears throat> the channel capacity theorem. The channel capacity theorem says, the maximum amount of information rate is equal to two pieces of information per second per hertz. What is this? We'll make it clear. But let's state the theorem formally first. The channel capacity theorem says a maximum of two B independent pieces of information per second can be transmitted error-free over noiseless channel of bandwidth P hertz. It simply says if you are given a certain bandwidth, if we have a wire or wireless channel or fiber optics with a given bandwidth B, don't, then don't think that you can do transmit to whatever rate you want. There is a theoretical limit. What is this theoretical limit? It's twice this bandwidth. So let's see this in diagram here. Assume that this is your channel, all right? And now the channel has a certain bandwidth. You cannot just put anything inside. So for a given cable, for a given infrastructure, there is a given uh, limitation on the data rate. Data rate, bandwidth is measured in hertz, and the data rate is, is, is measured, for example, information per second, or bits per second, or symbol per second. So we have information per second per hertz. So how did we come to this conclusion? Remember the, the Nyquist theorem says that uh, a continuous signal with bandwidth P can be represented uh, or can be reconstructed if sampled at more than its highest frequency, or twice the highest frequency. So this channel, for analog, it can handle a signal of B hertz. And we know that this signal of B hertz is equivalent to 2B samples. And this is how we got the theorem. So the conclusion here, if somebody give you a certain cable or wire with a given bandwidth, let's say 10 kilohertz, okay, don't think about software technique that's going to give you whatever data you have. There is a physical limit here that if the bandwidth is 10 kilohertz, all we can send is 20 kilo samples per second. Now we can do something about the relation between samples and bits, and we'll see that later on. Okay, is a sample mean bit or not? Something we're going to see. If the system is binary, then it's going, it's going to be bits. Otherwise, we'll see later on. But the conclusion from this slide is that there is a channel capacity. For every channel, there is a maximum capacity measured as information per second per hertz. If you give me 10 kilohertz, I can give you 20 kilo information per um, second per hertz, or 20 kilo information per second, because we have defined the number of hertz. The second application that only applies to sampled signals is the concept of time division multiplexing. Remember we had earlier FDM, frequency division multiplexing, which means mixing signals with different frequencies. Here we have mixing signals at different time. If you zoom in here, you'll find out the first signal, valid signal, we are sampling the signal, so we just have these uh, impulses. For the blue signal, we made a shift and we sampled the blue signal. For the green signal, we have another shift and we sample the signal. The fact that these samples are shifted 
we can combine them all on one channel on one wire and we get red blue green red blue green this is time division multiplexed okay, if these signals were continuous i cannot put them in one channel but now just we have samples there is some time spacing between them i can mix mix them all so if the sampling interval was ts and the mixed signal if you mix three it's going to be ts over three now compare this with time division versus frequency division multiplexing uh, the signal containing the samples of different uh, original signals is this is the one that's called time division multiplex signal tdm signal and this process of combining all of these together is called interleaving so red blue green red blue green this process that get, takes us from here to there is called interleaving interleaving so what takes us from here to there back to the organized colors is what we call deinterleaving deinterleaving samples are separated again to get back to the original signals so in, in summary this slide sh shares with you the concept of time division multiplexing as opposed to frequency division multiplexing it shows the process of interleaving or mixing or multiplexing and the deinterleaving process time division time division multiplexing tdm cannot be performed for continuous signals as we said because there is no spacing between the samples to combine them together the third application for sampled signals is the pulse modulated signals if we have a signal like this one and these are the sampling intervals i'm showing four samples we would like to represent them using pulses and not impulses we're now going to pulses which are rect functions okay as opposed to delta function i want to represent these using squares so there are different options the first one as the name says this sample will be represented in the amplitude so the original square pulse is scaled multiplied by the signal and we get this pulse amplitude modulated signal okay this is the second pulse the third pulse so what is the information it's in the amplitude recall here that the, the word modulation is used in a way different than what we had before modulation here does not mean changing the frequency per se it means adjusting modulating the pulse to carry the information the second option will be the pulse width okay or more correctly because this is a time axis we can say pulse duration modulation okay so if the amplitude goes high we have wider pulse higher wider pulse it's going in the negative side the width become less than the average and then it's going again to wider average so what is the information how do you go here from here to here back by looking at how wide is the pulse the amplitude is constant here now for the third option we have pulse position modulation so the width is constant the amplitude is constant what changes is where this pulse is positioned or located so if if the signal is is positive okay we're going to go to uh, if the signal is positive or high amplitude we go into the side more amplitude we shift more and uh, and so on and so forth so the spacing okay this is the minimum possible and then it goes back again so the position determines what the information is I'll show you more uh, examples in the next slide so this is just to illustrate more we're superimposing the, the signal on on the pulses so this is pulse amplitude modulated remember we're just sampling and then doing the pulse amplitude modulation so the amplitude varies with with the with the signal we can have pulse position in this example there is a nominal position and since the signal is negative we are shifting to the right if the signal is positive shifting left this shift is relative to the synchronized pulse position uh, the third example is the pulse width modulation okay so the width here if the signal is if it's wider it means it's more positive for a zero there is a nominal width and then it goes negative with of course less width a logical question would be which one of these should we use pulse amplitude pm ppm or pwm or pdm uh, there are different things to look at for example just for example we can look at the power 
uh, which one of these has a constant power for example we can see that the pulse position modulation has a constant power because the amplitude and the, the width does not change which is of course an advantage for pulse position modulation uh, another alternative would be what have, what if the signal changes uh, rapidly or suddenly to a large value here you are limited because the pulse spacing is limited you cannot just exceed the limit so your your modulation will saturate similarly here the pulse width there's a maximum for that amplitude seems to be more relaxed but of course we are limited by the hardware now the fourth type if you like it's totally different this is called pulse coded modulation the only the major difference is that here pulse coded modulation is applied when we are in the digital domain which means we're not just doing sampling we have we are done with quantization your signal is quantized and every level is now represented by a series of pulses so uh, we can say that pulse coded modulation represent the signal in terms of sequence of pulses being zeros and ones uh, analog to digital conversion is required it's not just sampling we also need to quantize as I, as I mentioned to get into the PCM stage the quantized forms of the samples are then converted to binary digits for example or uh, and these digits are represented by pulses like for example this sequence 0 1 1 for example 0 whatever represent the first sample a sequence of pulses is representing the second so there's a code that represents the sample the code represents 0 1 up to 15 in this example we have four bits and this is now called the PCM because it's not the amplitude it's not the position it's not the width it is the sequence itself it's the code remember that PCM is a little bit different than PM PPM and PWM the sequence ones the sequence of ones and zeros outputted by the ADC is called the PCM pulse coded modulation pulse have been coded into ones and zeros now in this slide, last slide I just want to share with you a few things here regarding the how to extend things to daily life if you look at pictures here and if you zoom in in digital cases you'll find that you start seeing pixels and images when we quantize we quantize both in X and Y sorry when we sample so we, we, we divide our image into samples we take samples from X and Y and this is why we, we end up with squares these squares are called pixels of course if you take more samples you expect to have higher resolution but it's very similar concept we have to quantize in two dimension also note that if you have a colored image like in this case it's basically I need to be represented into usually multiple colors like, like RGB system red green blue and then of course you need to sample every image in X and Y how many colors you use to represent these images is quantization and this is a thing will will we'll spend more time on quantization but if you represent these pixels with only one bit being black and white you have one quantization level one bit of course you can have more or less and then of course you need to multiply by three for the case of a colored image uh, for the case of videos it's very similar to still images but you also need to sample in the x-axis so we have image 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 and this every image is multiplied so just to look at the standard uh, we have how many frames per second okay there are different standards European American for the standard video uh, recording and usually it's the range of 24 40 samples depending on how is the accuracy um, but our eyes will be happy enough maybe with 30 samples per the uh, 30 frames per second so images is sampling in two dimension video is sampling in uh, three dimension okay if, if you know I'm sure you heard about slow motion cameras and they take much more samples so that, that you can reproduce things and I advise you to visit the I'm sure it's very popular the the slow motion guys and they have some videos where they use uh, lots of frames then they display them slowly you might like to look at them okay uh, maybe we'll discuss more about this when we come to uh, quantization and digital images those are some applications for uh, sampled signals including the channel capacity theorem the modulation of um, pulses into uh, 
the general capacity theorem and the modulation of pulses into PCM, PWM, and PAM, and what have you. Thank you for being good listeners, and we'll see you again.